Uh, go ahead and get started, Leila. We're live on YouTube now. Sorry, I was muted. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Leila Kandiri, and I'm a senior instructor at Coded. And tonight, I'm going to be your MC for today's demo. So first of all, I would like to start by thanking you for joining us tonight to see the Graduates Capstone Project. Uh, I know that it can be a bit exhausting with Ramadan and all the uh, loyal Ramadan. So thank you so much for joining us. So I'll start things off um, by talking to you about Coded and who's Coded. So uh, Coded is the first coding academy in the Middle East and it was established in 2015 in Kuwait. Uh, during our time from 2015 till now 2021, uh, we had more than 35 boot camps. Uh, we, uh, more than 400 st uh, students graduated from CODED and they built more than 90 capstone projects in the project phase. And now that we know about CODED, let's move on to towards talking about the journey throughout this bootcamp. Uh, first of all, uh, we'd like to thank Tim Keen because our, uh, they were our supporters throughout this bootcamps and they were the sponsors for the Bahraini students where they sponsored 16 Bahraini uh, students uh, and allowed them and gave them the chance to uh, try this bootcamp. So thank you so much for that. Let's talk about what we have in this bootcamp. What did the students do throughout this bootcamps? So this was a 14 weeks bootcamp. Uh, it was for five days every day uh, per week and eight, hour, eight hours a day. Yes, that's right. Eight hours a day for 14 weeks. I know it sounds very intensive and it was very intensive. And you might think that this is a lot of time but let me give you an interesting fact. It's that most of the students, and I'm, not, I'm sure that it's not most of them, all of them put much more time into this bootcamp. And they stayed even longer than eight hours per day to code, especially during the project phase. The reason why this bootcamp is so in intensive is that we keep our promise when we say that they're going to be amazing job ready developers. So now that you know how intensive and time consuming it is, let me talk to you a bit about what happens during those 14 weeks. Just give me a second, I need some water. So in the first two weeks of the bootcamp, we start with the foundations phase. During the foundations phase, the students learn how to use the command line, Git, JavaScript, then we move on to data structures and algorithm. And then we do some HTML and CSS, basic bootstrap skills, and how to deploy using Netlify. The way that we do it at Coded is that during every phase, we build a lot, like we have daily tasks and every week we at least have one to two mini projects. During those mini projects, students develop more skills and make sure that um, they sharpen their skills enough. After the uh, foundations phase, we move on to the next phase, phase which is the React phase. So React uh, is a front end JavaScript library, which helps creating dynamic web apps. During, during this phase, they learn how to create their websites. After that, after that, we move to the express phase, which is a JavaScript frame, framework where we learned how to build RESTful APIs. After that, they move on to React Native, which is a front-end framework for building cross-platform mobile apps, which means it, they learn how to build applications for both iOS and Android phones. Okay, after that, this is where things become even more intense, where students start the project phase. The project phase is a six-week phase. In the first part, we have the multi-platform project where they built a platform to uh, book uh, tickets, just to remember stuff that we can't do in COVID. So they built a whole platform for both the airline and the customer side. 
uh, and they built the backend and the website and mobile application for the whole website, all from scratch in just two weeks. The students did an amazing job and they uh, built uh, projects on a very professional level. And finally, we have the capstone phase, which while you're here today to see their final projects, where at the, be at the beginning, every group chose a problem and then how to solve this problem using the skills they learned from the bootcamp. Okay, so I will stop bragging about how amazing our students are, and I'll let you see what they built during the last three weeks for their capstone projects. But before that, because we believe that the growth of our graduates comes from the feedback they receive directly from the markets and companies, like many who are joining us tonight, we have invited a few esteemed panelists to offer feedback on each team's capstone project. So we have Ms. Alia uh, from Timkin, our uh, sponsors, and Mr. Haider Al Musawi. Uh, the co-founder of Sirdab Lab, and Mr. Omar Rida, the VP of Engineering from Reblox. So before we start, I'm sorry, just one last thing. I'd like to remind you that we have an alumni website, and on it, you will find all the relevant information that you need about our graduates. So if you're interested in hiring any one of them, please visit the website and drop us a message there. So. We will start the projects. So the first team we have is Team Scratches, presented by Hajar, Hawra, and Ahmed. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you, Leila. The mic is yours. Good evening, thank you for being with us today. We are very excited to showcase our project to you. I'm Ahmed Al Khnezi, and joining me are my colleagues. Hajar. And we are Team Scratches. In today's world, life is hectic for many pet owners. With commitments at work, time out with friends and family, or even well-deserved vacations, it's not always possible to provide our pets the amount of attention they deserve. Although kennels and pet hotels exist, they deprive pets of the freedom to roam and explore by confining them in little cages. Rows and rows of pets try to seek attention from the few attendants on duty. Imagine being locked up in a cage and your demands for treats are ignored, all while your other half is away. Scritches is here to connect you with other pet lovers who are excited to help you. Take care of your pets like they are part of their family. Belly rubs and hugs included. Our sitters are normal people who love pets, just like you. They are dedicated to giving your pets a home where they can freely roam and explore, adding up to a day worth barking or meowing about. Hajar is going to take you through the website as a pet owner. Take it away, Hajar. Thank you, Ahmed. I'm having a very busy schedule at work. We are a few weeks away from releasing a new product and I have to work extra hours. There's no one to take care of Buddy, my dog, and I'm afraid that he would feel stressed out by my absence. So I came across an ad for a website called Scratches and I already registered for an account, but I didn't make a booking yet. So let's give it a try. It seems easy to use from the steps that I'm seeing. And it looks like that I can trust them to take care of my dog. Okay, now let me search for pet sitters from where I live, Bahrain. Okay, there are lots of pet sitters to choose from. Since I have a dog, I'm choosing dog sitting as the service. Okay, now let me choose dates from 25th to 27th of April. Okay, Ismail has a good price. Let's take a look. Oh, he's not available on the 27th of April. Let me see another pet sitter. Let's view Hawra's profile. Okay, so she's near my home. Her bio looks interesting and the price is affordable. So let me book. Oh, so I need to sign in before I proceed with booking. I'm gonna sign in. 
So I'm going to put my username and password. Okay, everything looks good. All right, so I need to add my dog before I book. So I'm going to add it. I will put the name, choose the type, and I will upload an image as well. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to booking. Okay. Oh, I noticed that she's also available on the 28th and 29th of April. So I'm going to extend my booking. All right. Now I can choose body. Everything looks good. The total price suits my budget. And now I can place the booking without worrying about body anymore. All right, now let me view the booking. Perfect. There is the booking that I just made and it's pending. Hopefully Haura will reach out soon. Now Haura is going to demonstrate the experience of a scratches pet sitter. I have always loved being around men and I need an extra source of income. So I joined the Earthers as a pet sitter. The Earthers let me have a flexible schedule where I can work whenever I'm free. But unfortunately, I have a doctor appointment in the end of April, so I will delete this date from my schedule. Instead of that, I will add the end of April to be available in my schedule. Also, I will change the price, the SBD, so that, so that I, I can attract more bit orders and increase my gain. Oh, it looks that I have a new booking building. So I will confirm it. Everything looks great now. Let's go back to the slide. The project front end is a combination of React and Material UI. But the back end consists of Express and Postgres as a database. These are our project models and the relations between them. A user can be either an owner or a sitter. An owner can have many bits. Most owners and sitters can have many bookings. Project management is vital for the success of any project. So for project workflow, we utilize Trello to create our scrum board for the tasks of the project. We used Miro for the diagrams and ERD. We used Balsamic for the wireframes of the website. For code management, we used GitHub to create our repos and to manage the flow of work with GitHub branches. For communication, we used Discord to discuss the project and to share our thoughts together. For future work, we are planning to enhance our website with an admin portal, reviews for pet sitters, additional features like pet grooming and vet services, as well as pet activity updates. That concludes our presentation. For the next time you need someone to take care of your pet while you're gone, you know where to go. Once again, we would like to thank you for being with us today. We are now more than happy to answer your questions. يعطيكم العافية. الله يعافيك. الله يعافيك. الله يعافيك. Our dear panelists, the mic is yours. تفضل أستاذ عمر. يعطيكم ألف عافية حوراء وأحمد وهاجر. Uh, um, I thought the ERD was was really great. Uh, it shows engineering maturity. Um, illustrations um, Site was very snap uh, fast, very snappy. I'm curious, to to material UI? How did that affect um, the way that you worked uh, after moving from Balsamic to the actual UI? All right, I'll answer that. 
Um, we liked how simplistic Material UI looks, and we wanted to keep things as simple as possible for our end users. So that's why we went with Material UI. As for the mockups that we made with Balsamic, things um, did not um, stick with uh, what we had envisioned in the first place. There had actually been so many changes to the user interface. Rahib, shukran kthir. Thank you, Rahib. Hello, team. Yatikum uh, Afia. I've been asked to give uh, some user experience feedback. Uh, this is my uh, area of expertise. Uh, but honestly, in terms of uh, the look of it, the general uh, flow, it's excellent. And then, like, I, I really uh, enjoyed seeing the demo. Uh, one thing I'll point out that uh, sometimes you don't want any steps getting in the way of the booking itself. So uh, one thing you want to consider, uh, there are two uh, points to this. Uh, when the user wasn't signed in, there was just a message to go sign in. There was a single button. You could have added the actual sign-in form on that screen itself instead of making it a two-step uh, uh, process. And then the other point is, uh, okay, I may not have included information about the pet. Uh, that can wait till after the booking. Because sometimes when you add too many steps before the action, that, like the actual booking, uh, it may cause uh, reluctance or like people put off that action. So you want to close that gap as quickly as possible. Noted, thank oh, yeah, you for your valuable feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this very well presented pitch. I, I really enjoyed and, and uh, this presentation um, and the amount of work that you've put in. Um, the interface looked, as a layperson, I thought the interface looked uh, quite easy. For 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 me, um, um, I have I have a couple of dogs. I would um, be one of your customers one day if you ever decide to go out uh, with this in the market. Um, Well-rounded presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so thank much for you. your thank feedback. You so we we would love to have you as a user. And thank you for sponsoring us. Yes, that was a really you. good opportunity. يعطيكم العافية تيم سكريتشز يعطيكم العافية بانالست ننتقل حق النكست تيم اوكي اوكي ذا سكند تيم وي هاف از تيم فودت بريزنتد باي اسماعيل ايمن اند احمد جنتلمان ار يو ريدي؟ يس وي ار اوكي the mic is yours. So hi everyone. We are Team Fooded. Uh, we consist of myself, uh, Ahmed and Ayman. So the problem that we are try uh, trying to tackle here is that uh, many people uh, don't know how, uh, how to cook or they just prefer to use their uh, kitchen rather than going to uh, uh, a workshop. Another problem that uh, m most people are facing is that uh, people who have no experience or uh, a bit of experience in cooking, they just don't know how to choose the ingredients. So uh, that's a problem that's gonna be solved. Uh, nor they don't know how to, oh, nor they don't have an interactive way to learn. So uh, Coded just got everything solved. So now Ahmed go uh, gonna show us how for the platform is going to solve these problems. Thank you, Smail. So, hello, my name is Ahmed and welcome to Fooded, your go-to platform for food and cooking education. Now, um, I am one of those that Smile just spoke about. Um, I can't find my way around the kitchen, to be honest. So this is a good opportunity for me to explore this website with you. So I'll start first by exploring the chefs that we have. 
Um, we have a number of, of uh, famous chefs in Bahrain and throughout the, the region. And if we go to one of the chefs here, Chef Sharvini, let's say, and we'd see that we can see a list of his recipes. Now, um, I can just go to the recipes list to view the entire list in the website, and I can choose any of that to learn. But um, I'm a fan of, of um, Om Ali, the dessert. So I'll just go and look if I can find an existing session to learn about. So if I go to the upcoming sessions um, section, I can find that there is a session here by Chef Ayman, and it's going to be on the 23rd of April. That's next Friday. So that's a good day for me to join um, the session and prepare some for my family members. So once I press on that, I have the details, the recipe description, the ingredients, cuisine, and I can press on the booking button. Now, this is where it shines. So I have the book a session with a quantity. Now, just as Ismail said earlier, um, shopping for ingredients can be a hassle for some of us. So what food it does is that it sends us enough ingredients for the quantity we want to cook. So I'm cooking for four people and I'm booking that. That's it. And I'm receiving a booking confirmation. Now, what's really cool about the platform is that it's not only targeting us learners, it's also targeting people like Ayman, the chef. Now, during this, um, during this pandemic, we have many restaurants operating at less than their full capacity and chefs have free times. So what chefs can do here is that they just go and add a new session. And not only do they contribute to people learning the, the education, the spreading of education of cooking, but they also can create their own revenue stream. So just like that, I added a new session and Chef Ayman can start teaching at the, uh, on the 23rd. Now, uh, for now, we will move on to our Ayman, not Chef Ayman, to cover the technical details behind the Fooded platform. Thank you, Ahmed. I will start with the technical part of the project. First of all, the project architecture. And as you can see from the ERD, Included recipes uh, are everything. Everything revolves around these recipes. Where chefs create recipes, they fall under cuisine. Ingredients belong to recipes, and users can book sessions to learn these recipes. Now I will talk about the technologies that we use to build our uh, website for the backend. We used Express to build our API, and we used Sequelize ORM to communicate and manage our, data, our database, which is a Postgres database. For the front end, uh, the core of our website was built using React, and Redux was used to manage the state of the web. While we used Material UI to design and build our user interface. Other than these technologies, we have integrated Zoom API uh, to generate Zoom links for our sessions and Syndicate API to send emails for, to the users uh, with the booking details. Now moving on to the project management. Uh, in Trello, we created a Scrum board to manage uh, the project features and the workflow. While for code management, we used GitHub. We made two repos, backend and frontend repos, uh, to manage our work in the code by creating a branch for each feature. And as a team, we used Discord to communicate and assist each other while working on the code. And from here, Smile will take it and will continue with our future plans. Thank you, Ayman. So for the future plans, we are planning to integrate a simple payment gateway, a premium uh, membership that will add uh, some special functionalities, a, uh, a community. So uh, uh, everyone can spread food uh, education. Last but not least, e-commerce. Uh, we're planning to uh, we're planning to create an e-commerce aspect in the site uh, to, to provide a honey, 
required a cook, a cookware. So thank you. And for those who need help in cooking, feel free to join. Thank you. يعطيكم العافية تيم فود. Any questions? Thank you. يوعدونا جزاكم الله خير. نحن رح نتفضل مرة ثانية. Panelists, the mic is yours. تفضلوا. تفضل أستاذ عمر. يعطيكم ألف عافية إسماعيل وأيمن وأحمد كثير حلو المشروع دائما بنبسط لما أشوف API integrations very attractive for prospective employers و مو إشي سهل to figure out how to make it work with your application فيعطيكم ألف عافية I'm very curious على internal API design اللي عملتوه جوا الابلكيشن تبعكم شفت إنه you have similar data على in chef's page where you're listing the chef and his recipes and then and the recipes page where it's a breakdown of all the recipes uh, did you design these as separate apis or are you using one and then uh, kind of handling il, 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 what data you want to use on front end galiban hu istakhdamna wahed api wahed bas ala hasab el shagla mathalan adna ايميل اي بي اي استخدمناه في اكثر من مكان حق البوكينج حق الساين اب ف يتغير بس المسج بس الفانكشناليتي العامه هو نفسه كان ما عدا المسج نفس ما قلت لك تتغير على حسب الحاجه على حسب المكان اللي نحتاجه فيه رهيب يعطيك الف عافيه الله يعافيك يعافيك ثانك يو فور ذا كويشن Yeah, uh, team. The first point I'd like to mention is uh, there's something known as the curse of knowledge, which is basically when you know your project, but your audience may not know the project. And from looking at the, the website, uh, as I sort of land on the homepage, it's not really clear what kind of education you're providing. And for me, it's, not re- uh, it's still not clear whether you're providing the ingredients or not. Uh, as, I'm guessing that you will be providing the ingredients for the cooking. Exactly. Yes, we are. And then, so yeah. the, if you look, uh, if you assume you know nothing about the project and just look at the w- the entire website, it's this uh, feature is not clear. Even though it's a really good thing, يعني, you should be highlighting the value that uh, that comes with your service. Um, uh, uh, one thing uh, I actually call myself a kitchen phobe, like. I'm afraid to step into the kitchen, okay? So one thing I would love to know is what is the difficulty in preparing each dish? You included the duration, but it's not uh, the difficulty. So is this for absolute beginners or is it for a, a bit more advanced beginners? Uh, I'm guessing it's because you're targeting just beginners. Uh, but even then, uh, I think there are people who aren't comfortable with like, more than five ingredients. So a way to make it easy yeah, on the user, maybe uh, amount of in, uh, ingredients, the, like what uh, utensils you'll be using to make it clear uh, yeah, the level of difficulty and what I'm comfortable with. Uh, the uh, quantity wasn't clear because uh, I wasn't sure if you'll be res- providing the, uh, the ingredients or not. So quantity, you wouldn't refer to Uh, people as quantity. Uh, so uh, again, just think in terms of the wording, in terms of how you're communicating the message. So how many people will you be feeding or will you be inviting? Will you be hosting? Uh, something like that. Um, you relied on the sidebar for most of the functionality. I would recommend having it actually as part of uh, the website. The sidebar can be things for things that Uh, you go back to on a regular basis, but as a first time user, you're actually hiding most of the functionality within the sidebar. Um, last point, uh, you have Zoom integration. Uh, my highest recommendation when you do a demo is to give us a taste of the actual, you know, the, like Omar mentioned, the API integrations are the juicy stuff. So if you're able to show that it's actually working, that would be great, yeah, as part of the demo. Oh, yeah, the come out, yeah. 
This is much appreciated. Miss Alia, would you like to add anything? Yes, um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ismail, Ayman, and Ahmed, uh, on this uh, presentation. I, uh, I second what, uh, what, uh, my, uh, what, what, uh, what the other panelists have mentioned. So it's great that you have the, um, you know, you've had, you've added all these API integrations, but we would have liked to see, see some of them in action. Um, on the points that were made in terms of the the um, the programs uh, or the or the recipes that people can choose, I would also add on top of the number of servings, we could also add um, the the whether they're appropriate for young adults. So, for example, if you have uh, children who are above a certain age that might be interested to learn certain recipes online, that might also be an option. Uh, but then again, I really like the uh, experience factor that you have added um, and, and the convenience of, of the whole idea um, of having the, you know, the ingredients being delivered and, and having to cook at home. Um, it's very COVID slash Ramadan appropriate. Um, um, so that's, that is also, uh, that's also nice to see. Um, one last thing that I would also encourage you, since you have some future plans, um, is to look into how, um, you know, there is also competition from social media. There are many chefs that go on social media and, and put, put out these re recipes for free. So why would they come to your platform and not, and not go to Instagram? So, um, but with that, you know, thank you very much. It was a lovely, lovely uh, presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yaatikum al team for it. Okay, ننتقل حق التيم الثالث عندنا تيم بوكشير presented by Abdullah, Rabab and Sadiq. Are you ready team? Yes. Okay, the mic is yours. Fadlaw. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Sadiq Al Mansour. And, and my name is Abdullah Mshagah. And Rabab Said and and today we will present our project Bookshare. Now, uh, before we talk about the web, before we talk about the website, let us first focus on the problem that we are trying to tackle. As a user, uh, as a reader, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you always want to read more books, but you have a vast book library with no place left for a new books? Or have you ever wanted to get, let's say, a very specific edition of a book that was released a few years ago, and that uh, edition of a book is not available anymore, and the way to do it, uh, the way to get the book is basically by importing this book, so you have to wait at least a month for it to arrive, assuming that the book is actually in a good condition, and you have to factor in also the shipping cost as well. Now, uh, why we chose this problem? What is our justification? Uh, first, because all of us as readers, we are facing the same problem. Uh, also, from time to time, we would like to uh, read about different genres so that we don't lose the interest of reading. And finally, we believe that the impact of solving this problem will be big. Now, uh, our suggested solution, uh, what if there was a platform where readers can connect with other readers and share their books? And that's what our platform is about. We built a platform that basically uh, aims to solve this problem. And now I will hand it over to my teammate Abdullah to show you a, sh a short demo about our website. Hi, everyone. A few days ago, I read a book. It's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I wanted to, I wanted to add it to my list of books in this website. Now, when I add books, I will search about it, this book. It's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. The edition of my book is first. The type of my book is trade or giveaway. For this book, I want to exchange it with another book. Now I will put trade. The type of my book, the type of cover of my book, it's hardcover. The edition of my book, it's like a new. Now I can add this book. And a few days ago, I am looking for, I'm looking for a book. It's called Why We Sleep. And I, can, I couldn't find it in, in any store in my country. Now, when I search for this book, it's called Why We Sleep. Now I found it. Now I can see the details of this book. 
the targets of, of, of this book said he's one to exchange it with another book. The type of cover of this book, it's paperback, and the edition is first, and the condition is good. It's good for me. Now I will go to Khalid Ahmed profile, and I will see what he's like of books. He's like a business. Now I will make a request. I will choose Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I will take Why We Sleep. I will send a request. Now when Khalid Ahmed go to his profile, and he can see my request and he can accept it or reject it. For now, I will reject it. Now I will let you with Rabab to explain you our ERD. As you can see here, the user can have many category that they are interested in. And this category are related to the book. The book that the user own are reconnected by my book model. The request to give away or a trade are connected to the user and book they own. Moving to the project management. To manage our project, we use the following tool. The first thing we do, we create user flow to show how system process using Miro, Adobe XD to create wireframe, GitHub to manage the code and allow us to calibrate. We use the branches for each feature and it works successfully, we merge to the main branch, Trello, to create Scrum board to manage our work. For the front end, we use React to create our web app, Redux to manage all the status, and Material UI to make a pretty user interface. For the back end, we, for the back end our ABI was created using Express. The database we are using is Postgres. We use Postman to test our ABI endpoint. Book store ABI to, to populate our database with the books. Now for the future plans, now that we are done with the website, our next logical step will be is to build a mobile application. We would also like to add a feature where the users can provide a feedback for the trade process. Also, we would like to add a feature where the user can uh, cancel a request that they sent. And finally, and most importantly, we would like to add a feature where uh, users can have a conversation before the trade uh, before the trade process start. Now, uh, to end up, I would like to to end up. If you are a reader like ourselves and you have a lots of books that you're not reading anymore, uh, maybe you can go and visit our website and trade some of your books with books from different from different genres that you never read before. I would like to finish with uh, a quote from one of my favorite authors, George R. R. Martin, and uh, the author uh, and the, the quote says, "A reader, a reader, uh, a, a reader." And the quote says, uh, a reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never read live only one. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. يعطيكم العافية تيم بوكشير وصح لسانك صادق. تفضلوا panelists, the mic is yours. تفضل استاذ عمر. أول شيء يعطيكم العافية. و... عبد الله رباب وصادق انا متاكد لحنا لو تعرفنا بنكون كثير صحبه لانه ذوقكم يعني بجنن بين جيم اوف ثرونز على ريتش داد بور داد على هو موفد ماي تشيز يعني اول اوف ذيز ار اكسلنت سجشنز اي حدا على الكول مش قارئ هدول الكتب او قارئ جيم اوف ثرونز اي سترونجلي ريكومند ات و جست تيك اون ا بيرسونال نوت اشطر بروجرامرز بعرفهم بحياتي ذير اول فيري اجريسيف ريدرز ام فا اي ريلي لايك ذا ذا ايديا اللي نقيتوها Um, in terms of um, the technology, I'm curious, how did you build a search functionality? Uh, for the front end, we, we used a low dash with Gbonds. Basically, uh, we, have a, we have the table in our, in our database. It is uh, the, the, the book table in, in, the, uh, in the ARD. So uh, this list basically has all the books in the database, but because like not, not, all, these, not all these books are uh, are available to the user only the books that the, the user will add so if, if let's say if you're a user and you want to add a new book and that book is not available you will see the list of the all all of the books and then you can select let's say a specific book and then you can add it to the website that's why we are that's why we use deep ones because and also because we don't want to send so many requests to the back end uh, we can control the delay the, the delay in seconds it's a very great library that we use for the front end 
Yeah, low dash is like magic. Uh, good catch to use debounce. Ooh, uh, maybe like a cool technology thing that you can check out if you've read about something called Elasticsearch. It's a uh, AWS, yeah. Yeah, AWS has it. And there's like also other um, uh, easy to use like managed Elasticsearch services, say like Algolia. Uh, you can build like super powerful search and, and it also uh, kind of works like magic. بس كثير حلو البروجكت يعطيكم الف عافيه. الله يعافيك. يعطيكم العافيه. الله يعافيك. الله يعافيك. I had a few questions. Uh, um, the autocomplete when the list of um, books that are available shows, this is based on the books that have already been entered on the site, right? You're not getting the information from anywhere else. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, that's clear. Um, I feel like there are certain scenarios that have not been taken into account, uh, and I'm curious about two. Uh, if the same book was available multiple times, how will the listing show? And then it seemed like you're only supporting a single book with the same type. So, yani, if two users. Uh, both have reached that for that. Would it show as separate listings or how would that work? Uh, that's actually a very good question. Um, uh, we So in the backend, we created another model called my book. So what's the difference between this book and the book model? For the book model, this is where you're going to see, let's say, uh, the name of the book, the author, the image, and all this information. But for my book, this is where, let's say, if, you, if we have more than one user who does have the same, the same book, this is where you're going to customize it in terms of the condition of the book, whether it is uh, the type of the cover, whether it is a paperback or, uh, or hardcover, or uh, whether it is listed for trade or giveaway. So basically, basically this is what uh, the user will customize. So basically, they're making copies of the, of the books that are in the book model. And that's in the my book model. Okay, great. Um, uh, the other thing, uh, I really like the trade concept, uh, but I feel like you don't need to check the user's um, categories or interests for you to actually uh, decide, yani, trade a single book. If you have multiple books available, get them to decide which book that they want, you know? Because this, this way, Uh, it prevents back and forth. Yani, uh, he doesn't want to trade with this specific book, but you may have another book that they're willing to trade. So creating that opportunity, because at the end of the day, all the books that I'm willing to trade, I am willing to trade for this book, you know? So uh, without restricting it to a single option, uh, this is what I mean. Uh, the other thing, just last point, Um, you had uh, uh, the options of trade and uh, uh, giveaway. Yeah, yeah but, uh, and you showed it within a drop down. What I would recommend, if the list is small, uh, use a button group or use radio buttons where all the options are visible because a drop down is um, like uh, when it comes to the interaction, it's a bit intensive. You have to click on it once, then find the option that you want and click on it again. With the button group, everything is visible. So make sure you select the right uh, interface element for the action or the option that's uh, available. So well, thank you very much. Thank you for all the suggestions. Ms. Ali, would you like to add anything? Yes, sure. Um, uh, thank you very much for this. What a fantastic idea to, to be able to, uh, to get rid of books that we don't want and maybe in some cases trade them. So shukran, Abdullah, Rabab, and Sadiq for this. Um, um, I, my, my comments will be on maybe some of your future directions uh, more gen in, more in, 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 in a way or another. So uh, perhaps it's also useful for you to add a few use cases uh, for basically uh, if you give away a book, Um, can you get credits uh, instead? So incentivizing people to give away books as well, where, where possible, and providing them with an incentive to continue to do so. 
uh, would, would be something that is worth considering. Um, um, another thing is also maybe localizing this website into, into Arabic. Um, uh, perhaps uh, this this might be the way for many of us to to be able to trade and and expand their Arabic uh, libraries um, uh, that 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 are you know in many cases at least for me are a bit scarce. Yeah. Um, but uh, but again, um, thank you very much. A fantastic, fantastic website. Thank All the best. Me. Thank you. يعطيكم العافية تيم بوكشير ننتقل حق التيم اللي ورا باك تو فود توبكس مع فود اون ويلز وذ نديم شادي اند محمد جنتلمان ار يو ريدي؟ يس اوكي ذا مايك از يورز تفضلوا So hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy that you're all here today. Today we are. I'm going to introduce Food on Wheels. Um, I am Nadim Al Qattan, and my colleagues Muhammad Husseini and Chadi Ali. So in this presentation, we will talk about the problem, the solution, project architecture, technologies, and management. So the problem. Imagine one day. Imagine one day with me, um, me and my brother, we were craving our favorite ice cream. So we went to this food truck and we were surprised that it was closed. And because of difficult name, we couldn't search. Um, we, we couldn't search about it in Instagram and see their timing. And therefore, um, this problem many people are facing. Also, another pre problem that people are facing is that food trucks change their location on a regular basis. Follow them on, on Instagram, you wouldn't know where they are right now. Also, that they add their menu as Instagram posts, and what, when they add more posts on Instagram, it becomes hard to navigate through. So our solution was to create an application for the customer, which will display all food trucks, their menu, and their location, and more. And for the food truck, we created um, a platform where, there, where they can add their schedule, menu, and see customer each. So for the food truck, they can sign in and see their schedule, their timing, they can change them and edit. When they open the menu, they can add a new category, delete a category, and see their food items. They can add a new food item, edit, and delete. And when they open the map, they can see customer heat spots. And also when they change their location, they can click on the update location button, which will update their location for the customers. And now I will hand the mic to Shadi Ali, who will explain the application. Hello, everyone. My name is Shadi Ali, and I will show you the customer side application. Since we are in the holy month of Ramadan, we all love to eat and try out new dishes. For me, I am a big fan of desserts and sweets. So I'm very excited to go out with my colleagues to have new items from new food trucks or even from new restaurants. I suggested to use our application to ease the food truck location. So once I open the food truck, I can see the food trucks that are available within my region, as well as the categories that the food trucks are divided into. But as I said, I don't know any of the new food trucks name. So I will switch back to the category section and I will choose desserts. There I can see two food trucks to choose from. We decided to have from both because why, why, why don't we? We love sweets. I can enter their 
uh, detail page where I can access their Instagram page as well as their location. We can see also their opening hours so that we can avoid what Nadim and his brother have faced. We can also see their menu so that we can choose what we want to have to save some time when we arrive at their location. Moreover, I can favorite the food truck so that it can be easily accessible from my profile page. But firstly, I need to sign in into my account or sign up for a new account. I will enter my username and password. Once I sign in, I can head to, the, to my profile page where I can see my information as well as the food trucks that I liked. Also, I can head to the map panel where I can see the food, my current location as well as the favorite food trucks location. I can click on one of the, of the food trucks uh, image where I can see their distance as well as the two options that they gave me, either to go back to the detail page or to navigate through Google Maps. Our application is very user friendly and will help a lot of foodies like me who can't decide what or from where they want to eat. I hope you enjoyed our application and bon appetit to everyone. I will give the mic now to Muhammad so that he can demonstrate the technologies used and as well as the future plan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shadi. All right, uh, I'm gonna be talking about the project technologies and the future plan that we have. So for the front end side of the project or the dashboard or dash panel of the food truck user, we use the Redux. React, Material UI, and Google Maps API to provide the heat map for the food truck users to be able to see the customer location and their heat map. For the uh, mobile side of our project, we use React Native, Native Base, along with Google Maps API to provide the map for the uh, users to be able to see their favorite food trucks and to be able to navigate to them. And the back inside of the project, we used Express, uh, Postgres SQL, and the extension called Postgres, which deals with the location to be able to save the geolocation of the users and the food truck users in our database. <clears throat> so for, for our ERD diagram, uh, as you can see, most of the relations are happening around the food truck, and that provides a lot of features to the food truck users. So for the applications that we've been using throughout the project, we use Discord for our stand-up meetings and our meetings as a team members. We use Miro for our user flow. And we use Trillo board to create a scrum board. So each card of those present a feature. And by this way, we know what features we're working on to keep track of, of them and to know what features they are done and needed to be reviewed. <coughs> and we used GitHub for our code management and collaboration. So for the future work or plans that we have, first we, uh, we, we, we have a plan to, uh, to add the pre-order feature in which the user could pre-order food from a food truck. So when he or she arrives to the food truck location, they could just pick up their food and leave. Uh, food truck rating, uh, allow the food truck users to display discounts. And later, and uh, finally, the notification system for both the food truck users and the customers. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, since it's Ramadan, please try out our app and hope you like the idea. And please uh, feel free to ask any questions. Yeah, thank you, Shabab. Shukran. Analysts, the mic is yours. Tadal. Tadal, Ustad Amar. يعطيكم ألف عافية كثير حلو المشروع هيك في كومبلمنتس إنه على السريع الموبيل فيرست أبروتش كثير حبيتها على اليوزر سايز ميكس توتال سنس جيفن إنه اليوزر إز أون فوت تو جوعان فا ريلي لايك ذا يوزينج بوست جي أي إس رهيب يوزينج جيو سبيشال داتا بيس تكنولوجي ذاتس فيري فيري كول و لاف ذا يوز أوف رياكت نيتيف يعني الكوميونيتي إز أميزينج You'll find a ton of companies use React Native, um, super popular. Um, I, I was curious, um, do you track a history of the movement of the truck? 
Uh, definitely, yeah. We we save the uh, food truck location in our database. Yeah. Rahib, um, Fee, there's a, an approach to thinking about uh, data storage that ma talamt anha a few years into my career. Isma event sourcing, where um, uh, you think of like storing data with database as storing a sequence of events versus a current state. So مثلا, we had the example, it could be uh, storing and updating a current location تبع the food truck versus every time a food truck moves location, you create a new database record with the new location. Um, it's kind of like an uh, accounting uh, approach to thinking about data storage, which wins you a lot of cool things like you know, not losing data, being able to um, do cool analytics like you know, Uh, at which locations did the truck get the most sales, for example? Um, mm. a very, very interesting way of thinking about programming. But I love the project. Very well done. I give you a thousand, thousand, thousand. Nadim, Shadi, and Muhammad. Allah give you. Allah give you. Thank you. I give you a thousand. An excellent idea. Uh, actually, there was a project in Kuwait. Uh, I think it was called uh, Trucky, and it was a way of tracking like the, the availability of food trucks. Uh, I'm just going to make two quick uh, comments about the, the UX. Uh, the delete and edit um, buttons within for the options, they were very close to each other. Usually, uh, you would want to separate these things so as not to cause the likelihood of Uh, making that mistake and then and it can create some anxiety with the user because they have to be really precise to avoid deleting when they don't want to at uh, the other point um when you're searching for the food trucks uh or even the categories before that uh the the way the navigation worked is that when you select a category you have uh, or cuisine I, i forgot the expression Uh, when you select it, you have to go back in order to check out another uh, category. What I would recommend is actually always keeping the categories at the top to avoid having to go back and forth. Keep this in mind when you're designing the interaction because you want to avoid as much as possible going back and forth, especially when the user is not uh, decisive. Uh, like if I'm trying, I want to learn more about lots of restaurants It means that I'm browsing. I don't have a clear path through the application itself. So allow me that flexibility of jumping around categories, jumping around uh, restaurants from uh, like a universal uh, navigation uh, menu. Oh yeah, thank you, Nadia. Mishkoreen, uh, Nadim, Shadi, and Mohammed, uh, fantastic presentation. Lovely to see what it looks like on a, on a mobile. Um, easy to understand, easy to go through. In terms of the, um, and it's a very, very uh, salient issue that a lot of people <laughs> will, will agree needs, uh, needs a technological solution to. Um, one, I really liked your future direction. Um, a lot of what I was going to say in terms of maybe you, you can think about this uh, or do this in the future has been covered on your slide. Uh, the only thing I would maybe add is maybe adding ratings um, um, uh, to, to uh, similar to Yelp or something like that that might help with, uh, with people finding Uh, new food trucks to to uh, to to go to, um, but all in all, fantastic. Loved the um, uh, the uh, the uh, integration as well, um, because you know it's it's a very important thing, and you had a real life uh, solution to 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 uh, to a challenge that many face. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. يعطيكم العافية panelists ويعطيكم العافية شباب. Um, ننتقل حق النكست تيم مستعدين طبعا اي بليف اتس سو اوبيس هاو ماتش ذس كوهرت لافز فود اند بات از وي هاف انذر بات بروجكت بات مانجر وذ محمد ليلى اند سكينه ار يو ريدي يس يو ار ريدي ثانك يو ليلى ذا مايك از يورز تفضلوا
Okay, let's start. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, pleasant evening to everyone. Hope you are doing well. Today we are presenting our application, Habitail Bit Manager. Let me introduce myself, me, Sakina Traif, and my colleagues, Mohamed Hamdan and Layla Salman. Let me tell you a story about bit owner named Nadim. He is a huge bit lover. However, he's become so busy that he doesn't have enough time to take care of his dogs or, or give them the attention they deserve. This isn't only Nadim issues. Other pet owners struggle with this as well. One, forgetting their pet appointments. Second, losing tracking their their budget. And the third one, not knowing when and how much food is left. And the list goes on. Now, for all those bit owners, we come up with an application to overcome all these struggles. I will leave the mic with Muhammad to demo the solution for you. So Muhammad, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sakina. Uh, we will move on now to the solution demo and we'll show the application directly. So this is our application, Happy Tales. So Nadim is using the application now. We'll start by signing in. We'll put the details. So Nadim just came back from the shop. He bought some vitamins and food for his pets. First thing that he will see is the dashboard but we will go first uh, to the warehouse where we can see all the items. Uh, we can use the categories to see the list or we can search. We will check for vitamin, it's already there. So we will add only the kitten food. So we will put the image and we'll put the details of this item. So the category, the name and the price. So the item was added successfully. Now we will add a new pet to the list since we have a cat that just gave birth. So we will put the kitten photo. We will call it kitten for now until we decide the name and we'll put the weight and add pet. Okay, so the pet is added. We can check the pet profile and we can see that right now it doesn't have any items assigned to it. We'll check Tosca profile. We have a lot of items assigned to it. And we, let's spoil the bit. We will add a fluffy bit to uh, his items. We can also edit the pet profile. For example, we can change the weight of the pet. Uh, this way we can uh, manage the meals for this pet. Uh, lastly, uh, we can remove, for example, one of the bits since Nadim gave it as a gift to his friend, so we will remove it from the list. The last thing we have is uh, the user profile. We can check the user details uh, as well as the budget and the money spent on all bits, and we can see the expenses of each bit separately as well as the balance. So when we can see the balance, we can plan our next time we go shopping for our bets. Uh, now we will move on to the project architecture with Leila. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, as you can see from our EID, everything is revolves around bets. Of course, as it should be. Uh, a user can have many bets, and for each bet, the stock of each item is being tracked of and uh, along with purchases that replenish these stocks. And as far as te technologies we use, uh, we have used a React Native to build our application along with Redux to manage the states. Uh, we also use a native base to style our application. As for the backend, we use Express and uh, for the ORM, we use SQLite. And for the database, we use Pastagrass. Uh, to manage our project, we have used Discord uh, to communicate with each other and, for, uh, and to do our daily, uh, daily stand-up meetings. 
Uh, we also use the Trello to build our Scrum board and keep track of our progress. Uh, we use, of course, Git and GitHub to manage our code and collaborate. Uh, some of the idea we put into consideration for the future development are uh, to integrate uh, with Google Maps API to find a nearby pet store and pet services. Uh, second, to uh, if a user have uh, many pets, uh, we will allow multi account to manage the same pets. And uh, third. Uh, from pet community to have helpful pet, uh, pets, uh, helpful tips and feedbacks, and also uh, overall to enhance our user experience. So I hope you like our application. So consider using it for your, for your app, for your pet, and thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Feel free now to have any question. Uh, you can ask us now. Yeah, thank you very much, team. Panelists, the mic is yours. So that is that, Amr. Yatikum alf afia, Sakina, Muhammad, and Layla. Kthir hello, the mashrua. Especially the logo, the illustrations, the uh, initial state of the screen, the mic on fi ishi fadi. It's always the uh, mic puts a smile on user's face and no. To see like, something cute that tells them, you know, okay, there's a call to action that you need to do here. Uh, I'm curious, is uh, uh, within the app you thought about doing any um, event driven triggers to notify users of certain things happening? For example, if uh, stock falls below a certain threshold, or maybe I'm getting close to exceeding my, bud uh, my budget, maybe pushing a notification to the user based on the actions. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, we have already in the model uh, to count the stock of the item, uh, but it's incomplete feature. So we are considering it for the future that you can restock and you can get a notification that this item will finish based on the quantity or the period. It can be uh, one of them. And all for the calendar, as you saw in the dashboard, they can add even events so they can track the appointments and, for example, the grooming uh, appointments as well. Thank you for your feedback and question. Thank you, um, The only comment that I would like to mention is that uh, sometimes it helps to have something known as micro copy. Because, for example, when the, the image was being added, uh, maybe there are certain restrictions on the image size or um, the dimensions. So giving some sort of guidance on what information to include, what might be uh, the restrictions, even with the text fields, instead of just providing an empty text field, give an example of the thing that they can write in that text field. Because a lot of people, when they feel stuck, when they're facing a blank uh, screen, it's hard for them to come up with things to write. Okay, so the micro copy for guidance and suggestions. Sure, definitely. Thank you, Thank you so much. Ms. Alia, would you like to add something? Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Leila, Sakina, and Mohammed, for this lovely uh, presentation. Very well rounded, and uh, you know, in terms of in terms of the content, um, what um, uh, what uh, what what I liked about the comments that were raised earlier um, um, is the point made on push uh, notifications. So I know that these are now going to to pet owners, but there are ways for you to also monetize that in the future, hopefully, if you decide to go with this and to have push notifications come from, um, you know, suppliers of, uh, of pet, uh, pet care products uh, and, and, and whatnot. So definitely huge potential for this. Uh, thank you very much. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a very useful presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so have much. يعطيكم العافية تيم ننتقل حق آخر تيم last but not least 
ذا تريب بلانر فنختمها مع فكرة حلوة to plan our trips with جنات محمود and ولا تيم are you ready؟ Yes, we okay. Are. The mic is yours. Thank you, Leila. So let's just start. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mahmoud, and I'll be presenting the Trip Planner project alongside my colleagues, Janat and Wala. As for the outline of this presentation, we'll start with the problem or challenge. Next, we'll go through the solution and accompanying demo. Then we'll go through the project management, architecture and technologies, as well as the future work necessary for this project. And the problem we chose to address is that uh, trip planning is a time consuming, tedious and inefficient process. And this is because we have to visit multiple platforms or websites to gather activities, track their locations and find directions between these locations. Therefore, we propose a solution that will be discussed by my colleague Wala. So for the solution, we come up with a trip planner where you can plan your trip by exploring and browsing activities on an interactive map and arrange your itinerary with these activities to have your full plan in one place. Also, you can explore other travelers and uh, you, also you can connect with other travelers and explore how they plan their trips. So let's go to the best part. Uh, so our team decided to plan a trip for entire coded family after this amazing boot camp. And usually I'm not the one who prepare planning, but I decided to use our trip planner to plan this trip. So we choose Madrid as our destination. Uh, we said that our trip will be for next month. Uh, it will be around three days. So let's explore what activities are there. Uh, yeah, we have a good number of activities. Uh, I will search for tours with a good rating and good price. Uh, yeah, let me check them. That's one look nice, interesting. And yeah, that's one also, I like it. And let me add, yeah, that's one look nice also. So I will assign uh, an activity for our first day. Uh, let's say it will be for the afternoon from one to two and uh, I will choose this one uh, now Janat will help me in planning the whole trip thank you so much Wala I got so excited so I went ahead and started planning for the trip um, I noticed though that the stadium tour we have on day one is conflicting with the full day tour so let's move that to another day we can have it in day three instead and I think a good time for that would be 1 to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Yeah, um, it seems that the activity we have in the morning is too early for everyone. I don't think they'll be ready by then. So we can change up to 9 a.m. at the 10 a.m. Uh, what we have planned so far uh, is good for now. We can always come back to it, add more activities and make adjustments if needed. Um, another good idea would be to explore someone else's trip to get more inspiration. And I actually have a friend who's been to Madrid last year, Ahmed Mohammed. So we can check his profile and how he planned his trip. Uh, let me as well follow him to stay connected and explore his upcoming travels. Yeah, um, the survey tour has on day two really stood out to me, so let's check that. Maybe we can add it to our trip as well. And he even posted a good review there, so I'll add it to my favorites to refer to it later. Um, I'll save what we have planned so far so that everyone can access the trip from my public profile, and you can make suggestions of what activities you'd like to add as well. And with that, we conclude our demo and we'll go back to our presentation where I'll discuss the project management aspect of the project. We utilized a Scrum board tool to distribute the work between us at daily targets and track our progress. We also had a feature branch workflow where each feature was developed in a dedicated branch. This allowed us to ensure that major errors are dealt with before merging to the main code base. It also allowed us to simultaneously work on features while reducing conflicts and effectively managing our time. We really um, enjoyed working remotely on this project and what made that possible are the multiple platforms we used to communicate. 
including Discord and Mural, which allow for online team collaboration. Uh, we also use Mural, which uh, we use for ERD and our wireframe. And the way we approached our project is to divide the task into four main stages, the planning, development, testing and improvement, and finally deployment. And through the development stage, uh, we worked on the features based on priority. And through each feature, it was an iterative process of developing, testing and debugging, and then adding UI and UX improvements where necessary. Mahmoud will now go through the project architecture and the technologies we applied. Thank you, Janat. As for the tech stack, we used the front end running React.js, a backend using a Node.js server with an Express application, and this communicated through the SQLize ORM to our database managed by Postgres. Next, for the ERD, we designed it to accommodate the necessary model relations for this project, and this includes models such as trip, activity, day, and user, as you can see on your screen, as well as their necessary rela relations. And this was done to provide the necessary data structures for the front end. And next, some interesting technologies we've used. We've used geocoding, maps, JavaScript, directions, and places APIs all belonging to Google Cloud Console, and these were used for the maps, locations, and directions you saw in the demo. As for the activities, we used Amadeus Strips and Activities API to populate our database of activities. For the front end, we also used Redux as a state container and Material UI to style our website. And last but not least, we used Lodash for their invaluable debounce function to save valuable resources on reducing requests to the server while searching for users. And next, Walat will go through the necessary future work for this project. Thank you, Mahmoud. So for the future work, we are planning to get more activities by using APIs from a well-known platform such as TripAdvisor and Airbnb. Also, we will develop a mobile application where the users can access their plans during the trips, for example. And we thought it's a good idea to enable the user to invite other people to manage the trip planning. And finally, for the monetization, we will add sponsored trips and the premium plans subscriptions. So thank you for your listening, and we're looking forward to see how will you plan our trip to Madrid using our trip planner. And actually, you can access our website by entering this link on, on the screen. And feel free to ask any questions. Panelists, the mic is yours. يعطيكم ألف عافية يعني طول الوقت وأنا عم بكتب نوت صراحة أيش أحكي لكم أشياء حلوة أول إشي الماب map interaction كتير 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 حلو I love how the status changes right there there's no jarring experience of jumping you know, from page to page كتير كتير حلو I love the schedule overview كيف عاملينه خطر عبالي when you're resolving a scheduling conflict uh, conflict detection algorithms for scheduling are very very interesting as an area uh, I'm sure um, a lot of companies that you're going to deal with in the industry have similar problems. I would definitely highlight that um, as something you've worked on. How you described the Git workflow. Um, it takes time to really you know, get good at that. Um, and then the Gantt chart. Yani, if you ever go into a business to enterprise software, uh, which is the field I'm in, this is going to serve you very, very well as a skill. Um, but I really like that. Um, obviously, love the integrations with TripAdvisor. Um, makes the project uh, uh, all the more real. Ooh, maybe one piece of advice um, uh, I would give is uh, learn about TDD. TDD being test-driven development. Um, it's something that, regardless where you're working in the stack, it's going to make you a 10x developer. Um, you'll be able to refactor the code that you're writing without fear of breaking things. And I guarantee that any QA person that you work with or product person are going to love you for, for doing it. But uh, thank you. 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 Thank Excellent uh, design. Uh, I don't have uh, really comments to add. Uh, but I was curious about uh, the person that you found. Uh, were you searching, uh, can you search only by name or are you able to search by the uh, areas or the cities that they visited? Uh, thank you for your question. For now, we only use the username as a, uh, to resolve the queries that the user has, but in the future, we'll, add, we'll definitely add the first name, last name, as well as the cities as well. Okay, great. Thank you.
تفضلي مس عليا Thank you. Shukran uh, wala jannat and Mahmoud. I really enjoyed this uh, presentation. Um, very clear, uh, fantastic product. As was mentioned before, um, um, it, it was very smooth um, and and easy for for us uh, to to see the changes in real time. So yatikum al fafia, fantastic work. Um, definitely, there is a lot of room for you to monetize on this idea and even uh, localize it for Bahrain um, by you know um, adapting it to include walking tracks, um, weekend getaways, etc., where you can actually you know um, uh, uh, include include uh, different functionalities that might be a that might be more short term as well, uh, instead of just long term trips uh, outside or, or you know um, that will require air travel at a time where we can't really um, do that. Uh, but again, fantastic, lovely way to end uh, these presentations with uh, with with this demo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. يعطيكم العافية تيم ويعطيكم العافية panelists. Thank you everyone. So I think you know why we love, we love to brag about how amazing our students are. Uh, thank you so much for giving us your time and watching. We are very proud of every single one of our students and we hope that you enjoyed the demo as much as we did. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to check out our website or reach out to us at hello at joincoded.com or on our social media accounts. Remember to check out our alumni site and you can even rewatch re the demos there. Thank you and have a good night.